Initiation sequence initiated. Time until human extinction in seconds. When will this suffering end? Oh. This world was once a land for true love and harmony. Eight. Did you really believe that? Seven. Go to hell. You know, Six. I'd rather not go back. Five. This is far too much fun. did I drink last night? It feels like my brain's trying to escape through me eye sockets. I wonder what the king wants with me. Hey, Dr. Jones, no time for love. Ah, baby blue. She keeps me warm at night. <laughs> They've been there for weeks. I'd hate to disturb them now. Underwear, how raunchy. Unfortunately, they're all mine. I'll leave it where it is. It's a bit dusty. I'll leave it where it is. Selling this set sure was a rookie mistake. I found it at the pawn shop for half a shilling. The Definitive Collection of Convenient Excuses. Volume 2. The Busty Barmaid and the Seductive Sorceress. I can't help but find the cliffhanger ending a little frustrating. This could come in handy. Great for writing stuff down. One quid. Rope. Seems strong enough. Shh, it's sleeping. Ah, wobble squats. It's just out of my reach. Oh, mysterious book. I wonder what secrets you hold. It's too high for me to reach. Not to mention really heavy. Besides, I'm pretty sure it's empty. Well, you can't reach it from down here. 
Besides, I've got a day or two before it needs replacing. There's still a good bit of life left in it. Lucky, because they're a pain in the arse to replace. Hold on. There's nothing in there. Someone's nicked my uniform. I'll just take one. Wouldn't want to be greedy. Darts. Sharp and pointy. I can't clean them up yet. I'm saving up to build a pyramid. Two green bottles sitting on the floor. <laughs> Someone's locked me in. It doesn't make any sense. I lost that key years ago. How the hell am I going to get out of here now? I think I'd be better off if I tied it to something first. That'll do nicely. Just don't tell Elf and Safety. In the castle of all places. Filthy street urchin larking about in the castle. <laughs> Pond dirt. Dong squirt. <laughs> Never heard of him. Dusty, please escort Mr. Longskirt out of the castle. He's making the place stink of booze. <laughs> Say this, Shorty. I can smell the hell on you from here. Sorry, tiny man. Sounds hilarious. Wanna 
the fool of all your pizza. You need to be mad at me to the pizza. Oh dear God of all that is pretty! What's happened to you? Oh, right. Look, I got to break into you. You're not making any sense. Go on then. What was it? Hornets. Nettles? Working girl? Don't answer that. Save me the spit shower. You know, a pinch of Medusa roots will sort that. Might even have some down at the market. Look, do you need me to write it down for you? I can see spoken word is not exactly your forte right now. Give me something to write on, and I'll draw you a picture. That's the ticket. Pass it here. There you go. Show that to the fruit merchant at the market. He'll know exactly what you mean. Hands off! I do like girls. Oh, sorry, sorry, you feel happy, man. You have two kids, and you can hear what's happening. Hands off! That's not for you! That's close enough. You look like you're at boiling point, and I'm not taking any chances. This is the truth. How rude! My bowel movements are none of your business, lad! <laughs> You're a strange one. If you must know, I've had a terrible case of the piles this last... <laughs> anyway, one would think you have more pressing matters to attend to, no? <laughs> What's that? Sorry, son, but I haven't the foggiest clue of what you just said. Let's get that scene to before your head falls off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, you! <laughs> yeah, you! Come here! Let me take a look at you! <laughs> Hello, handsome! Remember me? Not before you give out Gertie a kiss. Come here. <laughs> Bite. 
But if you ain't got the coin, you best start walking. Still open? We never close. Yay. Here at Fruit for Sale, we pride ourselves on providing the finest range of fresh fruit, exotic spices, and herbal remedies from across the lands. Nowhere else will you find such rarities as the Argonian Bouncing Vine Fruit, Stodgemore Virgin Rose Root, or even the highly sought after Stale Valley Beef Root. Although our reputation lies in selling the finest quality imports, we also offer a value range, catering to our lesser fortunate customers. Often misshapen, soured, or slightly fungal, our value range of fruit and spices offer the same medical benefits of fresh goods, only with the occasional bouts of vomit. <laughs> I've got to admit, you're kind of adorable. Can't imagine you're half as fun normally. <laughs> Would you look at that? I think he's lost the plot, Barry. Sure looks like it. <laughs> you know, we can't sell spice to miners. <laughs> oh, ain't that cute? The lad's a bit slow. I think he's got something wrong with his face. Oh, right, you think? I thought that was one of them birthmarks. Nah, birthmarks don't leak like that. Right, you is. Sorry about that. You got any money, lad? This Can't understand the word he's saying. Can you, Barry? Just give him a barge and he'll leave us alone. What are the furry ones? What do I look like? A bloody charity? Poor lad could do with a break. This is starting to all Tells you what, lad, because I'm an honest fruit vendor and I pride myself on providing a quality service to all my clients, no matter their financial situation. I'll cut you a break. You can have just one of these fine fruit you see before you, but choose wisely, for while the ripe fruit will bring you good health, the stale fruit will take it from you. <laughs> you have chosen wisely. There you go. Hey, 
Mm. Ah, come to your senses, Doctor. Yeah? One last case. Ah, so after some Medusa root, I see. Gun cost ya, that stuff ain't cheap. Ten gold coins. Pleasure doing business with ya. Wow, I feel better already. For a moment there, I thought I'd be stuck like that forever. Maybe folk will start taking me more seriously now. Hmm, maybe. Please, sir, spare me a putty. Ouch, I think his leg is broken. If I was a needle, this is where I would hide. Not got much use for a handful of hay. There. Keep your hands to yourself. Have you got a minute to talk? He speaks. You see that Medusa root did the trick? What can I help you with, lad? So, what's your story? Story? What do you mean, lad? Well, you know, tell me about yourself. A man of your stature must have seen his fair share of excitement. Aye, that we have. Be sure you've got the time. Sure, I love a good backstory. Well, it all started back in the poor Bezelwick. Barry and I was working on a job. Simple smuggling run, nothing fancy. The sort of thing we've done a hundred times over. You meet a guy, pick up a package, slip the ferryman a couple of coin and drop off at the next port. It was easy work and well paid to boot. Mind you, all good things have to come to an end. You see, Barry here didn't exactly have the strongest legs for seafaring. Was that normally a problem? We just slip a couple of locust berries and sleep through the night in the ship's hold. But this particular trip went a little different. Have you ever heard of the men with no noses? The, uh... Men without noses. Nasty folk want nothing more than to take what's not theirs. You see, these are folk who live for the sea. Born and bred on nothing but hardtack and seawater. Certainly not the type you would want to spend the night with. Anyway, we was about three skips from our port when this monster of a vessel came out of nowhere. I looked deaf in the eye that night. Literally, those guys looked like they come fresh from the grave. Faces like a cat's arse. Skin hanging from their bones. I swear, those men ain't human. Not no more. Didn't like the look of them. One bit. Barry here, God bless him. He saved my life. Slept through the whole ordeal, of course. Those locust berries weren't messing around. By the time he came to, the ship was empty. Nothing left but a gaping hole in the bulkhead. Barry had no choice. It was time to face his fear head on. With the lady taking water, Barry quickly fashioned himself a buoyancy aid. Strapping together beer kegs and backstays, he made a raft and took after the ugly buggers. Me, on the other hand, well, I did what I knew best. As soon as I squatted the pan, I made myself scarce. Found a tiny little stowaway on their ship, nestled in the back of their cargo hold. Figured it's safest to hide in the ship that currently wasn't being bombarded with cannonballs. But what about Barry? You didn't try to save him? Barry's not like you or me, son. Takes more than a few cannonballs to hurt this guy. Aye. Anyway, the wind was on his side and eventually Barry caught up with the ship. Slowly, he worked his way through, killing anyone who stood in his way. From the poop deck to the cock boat, to the gallery, to the guns. Barry would seek vengeance however he saw fit. Meanwhile, I had discovered the booty of all booties. These men had the biggest haul of contraband I'd ever seen. Rows upon rows of crates, full of the brim with exotic spices and spirits. This was not an opportunity I was going to pass on. Anyway, Barry turned up, we commandeered the ship and sailed it back to the nearest port. The rest is history. Wow, you guys are awesome! So, that's how you got all those exotic fruits and spices? Most of them, yeah. We still need to top up from time to time. Having our own belt helps. Wow, you could have been shackled and sold for labor if it wasn't for Barry. Or worse. Like I said, I owe him my life. You don't owe me nothing, boss. Aw, oh, guys. So lad, what are you buying? Hmm. So, do you sell anything else? Besides, like, spices and fruits, I mean. Not often. 
We get the occasional vintage cheese or preserve, that sort of thing. Why do you ask? Eh, just wondering. Well, be sure to stop by often. Our stock is always changing. We had truffles last week. Bloody lovely they were. Aye, polished them right off. Neat! Why stay here though, in Wrinklewood? Well, you see, after our somewhat troublesome time with seafaring folk, I made a promise to Barry. We set up shop just about as far away from any port as possible. He was never a fan of the Big Blue, and well, I was getting a little sick of our attack by that point. So we travelled north and settled in the last town before the snow hits. And here you are. Yup, charming little place really. Nothing to bother us here. Well, here's to many more years of peace and quiet. I'll drink to that. Aye, the easy life. Thanks, it's been a pleasure guys. Don't mention it. <laughs>